we'll give it a minute for everybody to uh, to continue to join us. Uh, but I will start by saying good morning or good afternoon, depending on what part of the country you are joining us from. Welcome to uh, the our webinar on the economic outlook for Canadian business. We're ex really excited to be um, hosting this webinar as part of our series. I think this is the last one we have scheduled for the year. So uh, welcome to the last webinar of the year as well. Um, just while we're waiting for people to come in, I will... Uh, let everybody know that the presentation is in the chat function. And if you look down on your screen, you'll see there's um, two buttons there, the Q&A and the chat function. And so the chat function is for you to use to talk to others and let us know where you're coming from. Hi, St. Paul, Alberta. So let us know where you, what part of the country you're coming from. It's always great to see. We've got members from coast to coast and it's, it's lovely to see so many business owners join us on these webinars, London, Ontario, Edmonton in the house, Richmond, Coquitlam. Yeah, you're all getting the hang of the chat function. Um, and for the regulars, they know we like to do this and it's just kind of fun way to introduce ourselves to each other. And um, so you continue to use the chat function to engage with each other. And then when you have questions for um, for, for me or for Simone, our, our, our main presenter today, uh, use the Q&A. And that way we will be able to know you've got a question for us. But if you want to talk to each other, that's great too. So we'll leave the chat function uh, open for that. Uh, but it's just harder for us to monitor questions in two channels. So sometimes we miss them if they're in the chat function. Uh, so put your questions to us in the Q&A. Um, so if we um, come to the next slide, you will see that uh, today we have our chief economist presenting, uh, Simone Goudreau. And Simone, I'll get you to turn on your camera and say hello to everybody. Hi, hi everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, it's great to see like a great turnout for the webinar from uh, every part of the country. I'm delighted to be with you today. Yeah, so Samoa is going to, I'm going to turn it over to him in just a, a moment uh, to present to us on the um, economy. Samoa and I work very closely together on research. All those surveys that you get usually have gone through um, a fairly careful vetting uh, process between the two of us, sometimes at fairly late hours, particularly during the COVID crisis. Simone, you and I were up at uh, at fairly fairly late hours working on some of those surveys. Um, and uh, it's really great, I think, that we have promoted Simone to chief economist just this year. And so I'll share that with everyone. And I think it's wonderful that small business has their own chief economist. And I can tell you that Simone does an awesome job with those other chief economists and with the Bank of Canada and with others, making sure that your views are at the table. So um, today's webinar is full of charts and graphs and uh, fun, but we've tried to add some uh, humor in there too. Uh, Simone and I will both tell you we're trained as economists, and so we know that uh, lots of people like to ask economists about the future and our predictions. But of course, um, if economists knew the future, they'd all be rich. And I don't know too many rich economists. So um, you have to take that with a grain of salt. However, we're going to do our best to give you some really good data. And what we're talking about, a lot of what we're talking about is based on data that you have provided us. And I think that's some of the best economic data out there, because um, who knows better than you what's actually happening in your businesses and across Canada. And I know the Bank of Canada and finance ministers across Canada rely heavily on your data, um, the data they get from you through us um, as a result of that. So without further ado, uh, Simo, I think I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to pop up for some color commentary, as I often do, and maybe slow you down on some of the, the, the charts. Um, but we look forward to your questions. And um, Simo, I'm going to turn it over to you. And I will turn my camera off for a little while. Thank you, Laura. Um, so uh, again, um, uh, let's um, let's just say that uh, we uh, we're excited to be here and cover uh, the economic outlook for small business. Um, I think a lot of things are happening right now, and uh, in this webinar, what we uh, will try to do is to uh, paint a picture of how it's going right now for the small business sector. So we will have um, data from uh, our own member surveys. Uh, we will talk, of course, about uh, inflation, uh, which is the, the big uh, challenge that uh, almost all of us are facing right now. Um, 
touching on uh, other related topics, supply chain issues, uh, labor shortages. And finally, uh, the R word, the recession. Uh, what are the odds of a recession? What else is ahead? Uh, so that's the, the program for today. We'll have time at the end for um, uh, questions. Uh, so we'll be able to cover um, uh, other topics if uh, time uh, permits. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, Alexa, uh, we wanted to uh, basically uh, just remind people why CFIB does uh, so much research and why you're going to see in the next uh, a few slides, a lot of data that is not just coming from StatsCan. There is there, there is a bit of a, a data coming from StatsCan uh, and other official sources, but a lot is coming from uh, CFIB surveys. And of course, uh, since the beginnings of CFIB, we decided that we will take our direction from you directly uh, and uh, take your pulse on the economy. So uh, in the next few um, uh, slides, I will present data coming mostly from two surveys that you may be familiar with. One is the Small Business Barometer Survey, which is a monthly uh, survey we've been doing monthly since 2009. The same question every month, but allows us to track over time trends. So you'll see that uh, it gives us a pretty a good a picture of what's going on in the economy and uh, in the small business sector. And we do have uh, another survey that we call Your Voice. It's an omnibus survey that allows us to ask different special questions uh, every uh, every month. And I just wanted to say uh, thank you uh, to all CFIB members for uh, answering uh, uh, our uh, surveys. Uh, we wouldn't be able to provide uh, such accurate uh, data and a, a good overview of the small business sector without uh, your contribution. So thank you for filling out CFIB uh, surveys on a regular basis. Uh, if uh, we go on the next slide, um, now let's get into uh, uh, our first uh, big topic. Uh, what's going on? So two uh, pictures to show you, of course, uh, to uh, remind us uh, what's what have been the last few years. Uh, we've been looking at uh, the light at the end of the tunnel and as some uh, of you and some uh, some of us uh, are finally seeing uh, some of the light uh, and for some also we're still very much in that tunnel like uh, we haven't made it or they some businesses haven't made it through uh, the, the 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 main uh, uh, challenges uh it's it's still difficult but even for those who uh, are uh finally out uh it is the the second picture right like uh, uh the road ahead is very foggy so uh that's uh, an, uh in two pictures uh, an overview of what the economy currently looks like uh two three years of uh, hell and and uh uncertain uh, uh path ahead if we go to the next slide uh, we'll actually use some of the data from uh, our CFIB uh, surveys. Uh, th this is uh, what we call our small business recovery dashboard. There is um, a link at the bottom of the, um, the slide where you can access the dashboard. It's interactive. You can select data for your own province there. Uh, and again, I think we posted the link uh, to uh, the presentation in the, the chat so you can access all of the links at the bottom of the slides there. Uh, and you can see that um, uh, half of businesses in Canada at, at the moment uh, are below normal sales. So that's when we compare with before the pandemic. Uh, more than half, uh, close to six and 10 actually, uh, still have a pandemic related debt uh, that they're repaying for an average of $108,000. Uh, uh, so, and 17% and, and uh, of uh, CFIB members are, are saying at the moment, uh, that they are considering permanent closure, so winding down the business or uh, bankruptcy. So uh, that's a uh, sobering uh, news, uh, you know, and uh, at a time when a lot of people are talking about economic recovery and uh, how much uh, better uh, uh, we are now compared to the past few years. Well, actually, for the small business sector, uh, a lot of businesses, as you can see, are still very much in a fight. Uh, so don't know where you stand uh, right now. Are you in the first half, the second half, uh, those that make uh, normal sales or those that make uh, below normal sales? Uh, but you can see the overall picture here. On the next slide, uh, we uh, wanted to present you uh, data from uh, uh, 
the small business um, uh, uh, optimism. Uh, so this is this is coming from our uh, monthly business barometer. It's the survey I was talking about. We're doing this since 2009, and a, a lot of uh, lines here, and maybe uh, uh, for some of you who are not used to charts, may, may sound a bit complicated. But what you have to look at actually is the blue line, which is our long-term indicator. The last point on the right uh, shows a level of 50. So that means that uh, we have a, about equal shares of uh, small business owners that are uh, optimist uh, uh, that have some optimism, and uh, uh, those that have uh, that are rather pessimist about uh, the, the future. So uh, it's, um, it's a distribution that we usually see uh, around recession periods. Uh, so recession periods uh, have, we visited that, uh, as you can see, like in the gray bars on the, on the chart, there was a re technical recession, of course, at the beginning of the pandemic. So uh, confidence levels, uh, both for the long term. So we've been talking about the blue line, but we also look at the shorter term, the next three months. That's the red line. Uh, they've dipped quite low, as you can imagine. And back in 2009, it was also quite uh, quite low. But at 50 right now, your outlook for the next 12 months uh, is uh, among the, the lowest levels that we've seen um, since 2009. If we go to the next slide, uh, I want to take us into uh, the uh, the inflation uh, topic. So, um, inflation, of course, is the big one um, that uh, is top of mind right now, uh, impacting you as a small business owner, but of course as consumer uh, consumers also, uh, and. Uh, it's been um, at the center of a lot of the economic talk. So we're going to spend a, some time uh, uh, on that topic in the next few slides. Uh, I wanted to first show you, if we go to the next slide, uh, Alexa, um, first, uh, sort of an overview of what inflation is. Uh, very brief uh, inflation 101. Um, what is inflation, actually? It's the rate of increase in prices over a given period of time. That's the official def definition, very official, from the International Monetary Fund. Uh, and uh, usually that period of time is uh, 12 months. So we really look, StatScan will go into stores, uh, compare a basket of goods, standard basket, month after month, and they compare the, the, the total price with uh, the same basket of goods from, from 12 months ago. And um, what that's giving us, if you look at the chart, uh, let's start with, uh, make, let's make uh, things more uh, simple here and let's look at the right part of the chart, the very end of the blue line. Uh, that's where we stand approximately. We're at 7% inflation as of October, 2022. So, so that's the last month that uh, StatScan uh, published uh, the data for. Uh, at that level, we're approximately, so if we if we rewind, if we go uh, uh, back on the, on the line, uh, that's uh, approximately where we were in March of 1983. That's, that's the last time that we had 7% inflation uh, in Canada. So relatively speaking, that's uh, that's a lot uh, of time, uh, and that's uh, quite uh, unprecedented uh, if you look at that period. But if you keep going back on the line, you can see that in the past, we've had periods of very high inflation as well. We even had deflation. So I've highlighted here for you different uh, historical events. So that's the gray uh, squares, and you can see that during the, the, the Great Depression, for example, we had deflation, and the highest inflation we've seen is 22%, actually, in June of 1920. So um, relatively speaking, compared with the, the past 30 years, uh, high inflation uh, over the last 100 years or so, uh, uh, not the highest, though, but uh, still much higher than uh, what you can see here on the, again, on the right part of the chart, uh, inflation has been around the 2% uh, target, which is the Bank of Canada's uh, target for inflation uh, for a long time. So we're not used anymore to that uh, high level of inflation. If we go to the next slide, um, you you can see here from that chart, it's, it's just a simple ch chart uh, to show you that uh, a lot of uh, countries are in the same boat. 
Uh, inflation uh, is not a uniquely Canadian uh, thing at the moment. Uh, you can see the Euro uh, area, Eurozone, uh, the US, the UK, Australia, are all, uh, all, all have seen uh, an increase in uh, consumer prices uh, since uh, almost since the start of 2021. So uh, it's a global phenomenon uh, and, and it has uh, many drivers as we can see on the next uh, slide. Uh, lots of things uh, can drive inflation, whether it's here at home uh, or uh, international drivers, as you can see on the slide. Uh, I won't read everything, but just uh, to uh, explain here what a wage price uh, spiral is, like that, that's the third bullet point. It's based Basically, when prices increase and uh, wages uh, are adjusted to catch up with the price increase and they in turn feed more inflation that drives more price increases. So that's a spiral that uh, a lot of economists and especially central bankers dread because that could take us down a rabbit hole of higher and higher inflation wages and prices. I, I just wanted to co um, comment, Simone, here that when we had the governor of the Bank of Canada on doing a webinar with our members after the last big uh, interest rate uh, hike, one of the things that he mentioned, and then that got a lot of attention because uh, the unions weren't very happy with him for mentioning that, was he said, please don't think that this level of, don't base your wage increases basically on the level of inflation. Um, and what he's specifically sending a message on is this wage price spiral that he doesn't want to see. So he doesn't want to see um, prices go up and then wages go up. So then prices go, that drives prices going up again. He's trying to sort of manage expectations around that. But I just wanted to mention it because for members who might have caught that webinar, that ended up then being a bit of a, a bit controversial for him because the unions uh, uh, got wind of uh, that he said that and we're not very happy with that, uh, trying to manage keep keeping wages um, under control. And while I've interrupted you, Simone, I'm going to just... Um, because you are commenting on member data throughout the, um, as well as other data that you're pulling in from the Bank of Canada and other sources. Christian had a question about how many businesses or companies are included in our in our member data um, studies. And one of the things we're so grateful uh, to our members for is often people will think a sample size of 100 is pretty good. And we are usually talking about um, a minimum of 1,000. Yeah, so uh, we have uh, for our um, uh, special surveys that we send every uh, month, typically we'll have, uh, and for those surveys, we actually send them to uh, almost all of our members every month. Uh, and uh, it's about two, three, four thousand responses, depending on, on, on the month. So it's a, a, a number of responses that is considered uh, very high for uh, for for surveys, uh, if you think about uh, firms, pri private uh, firms that do public opinion polling, they're usually quite happy when they get a thousand responses. Uh, we're currently doing uh, a banking survey uh, for which we we need. We, we've been doing that survey every three years. We need a lot of responses. And so far, your responses have been uh, uh, terrific. Uh, we have 6,000 responses for that survey, for example. At the height of the pandemic, uh, we I think we got a survey that got 15,000 responses from, uh, from you. So uh, that's really fantastic. And that allows us to uh, actually provide data by sector and by province, as you will see on this slide. I think we had another question from another member who uh, was asking about data by province and by sector uh, for the business barometer. We, you have all that data. If you go to cfib.ca slash barometer, you'll find that data uh, for your province and uh, for your sector. Yeah, and I, I think Clayton was asking which business sectors are the most uh, pessimistic and uh, most optimistic in the last uh, 12 months. And I know, um, I, I think Andrea answered uh, the question and gave a link, but I don't know if you wanna just comment on that in general, Simone, which, which sectors are, are most optimistic and pessimistic. 
Yeah, if you look at the uh, optimism by sector, right now you have uh, information, arts and recreations. Uh, uh, that is the most optimistic sector, really stands out from the crowd. Uh, uh, it's it's a level that we usually see when the uh, economy is at its full potential, right? And for that sector, it's the, 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 the reason probably uh, is the rebound uh, from, from a long period where uh, service-related uh, sector uh, we're not allowed to operate at that. Yeah. Uh, their and just remind there. members what's in that sector, the arts yeah, so, and recreation uh, and information. So you will have a lot of uh, uh, media related businesses, so local newspapers, but you will also have, when we talk about recreation, uh, you will have uh, businesses uh, in, uh, in arts, you will have businesses in the, um, uh, in the, the theaters, for example, cinemas. Right. Uh, and what about, know, is that, that includes, does that sector includes gyms and dance studios and? Uh, uh, yes, uh, or, and if they're not included there, they're in personal services, which is also a sector that is quite, uh, quite um, optimistic at, at the moment. So uh, you can really see right now in the data that uh, the businesses that are more on the service uh, side, I'm not saying everything's going well, but uh, maybe tend to be slightly more optimistic than uh, those that uh, are on the goods uh, side of things, uh, of course, because uh, they have even more challenges there with the supply chain issues and so on. Yeah, right. And who's at the bottom of the uh, optimism? Uh, okay. At the bottom right now, you have finance, insurance, and real estate, uh, and retail and agriculture. Those are yeah. the, the the bottom three. Um, I think for retail, it's been uh, it's been tough. It's something that we've highlighted, especially at this time of the year. Usually, we are used to see a higher level of optimism, uh, and uh, uh, we we know it's been. Um, a challenging time for a lot of retailers, uh, and that's why we uh, we've been quite active recently in promoting uh, uh, local uh, shopping initiatives like uh, Small Business Saturday a yeah. few, few days ago. So I'm going to help. A a a Angelo is helping you segue back to inflation here um, with a question on uh, measuring inflation. Is the basket of goods used the exact same over the years, and is the weight of each item in the basket the same over the years? Um, housing and energy are very volatile. How much weight do they have? So I know you're going to answer that as part of your um, inflation. So I'm using that as a way to segue um, back to your uh, to your presentation, and then I'll pop up again uh, when there are more questions. Okay. Well, thank you, uh, Laura. Yes, uh, the basket is uh, usually uh, adjusted by StatScan at uh, regular intervals. As you can imagine, certain things uh, that were consumed uh, 30 years ago. Uh, maybe are less important in the basket uh, today. And there may be things in the basket today that uh, didn't even exist uh, 30 years ago. So it's it's adjusted. Uh, but yes, you're right to point out that uh, certain things are more vol volatile. Uh, you have here on that chart, um, uh, the components, the different components of inflation. That chart is coming from the latest uh, Bank of Canada report every quarter, uh, or so they have a report uh, uh, that gives a pretty good overview of what's going on in the economy. And here you can see the black line is the inflation. Uh, you can see that inflation, uh, according to the, the data, has uh, peaked um, uh, in the middle of this year and I have, has since started going down to a certain extent. Uh, we've said it in a previous chart, it's at around 7% right now. It's been 6.9% for the past, uh, for the months of uh, September and October, the last two months for which we have data. Uh, and if you look at the bars below uh, the black line, you can see uh, where inflation is coming from. So you have uh, the first one, which is energy, the blue one. Uh, and uh, it is uh, it has been a good uh, driver of inflation in the past uh, several months and uh, and quarters, and it has since gone down, which is probably why we have inflation going down in the last few months. And then you have food uh, uh, services and uh, what they call shelter, which is all of the housing uh, costs. Um, We'll go to the next slide, and, and in the meantime, I'll, I'll just uh, say that, uh, again, to your question, um, uh, 
it's uh, true that energy and, and food prices uh, are more volatile, which is why the central bank is actually using a uh, different measure of inflation. And here on that chart, uh, uh, you can see that there are different lines and uh, there's inflation and what is called core inflation. And actually core inflation uh, takes out uh, energy and uh, food from uh, the, the, the inflation calculation. So that's uh, an indicator that um, uh, that the Bank of Canada, the central bank, uh, considers uh, more um, uh, a better indicator of the uh, the uh, fundamental inflation because energy and food prices tend to fluctuate so much. This chart just shows you basically uh, that uh, after inflation started rising, so whether it's the dark blue line or the light blue line here on the chart, uh, the Bank of Canada did not react uh, immediately. So that's the red line. It took a long time for the Bank of Canada to uh, start rising interest rates, which is its main way of um, fighting higher inflation. You may recall that uh, I said in a, a few slides ago that their target for the past 30 years or so has been to maintain inflation at 2%. So uh, inflation has been above 2% for, uh, for, uh, for a much longer time than is usually accepted by the central bank. And so you have to, uh, as a central banker, raise interest rates uh, at some point. And they've just recently started doing so. So at uh, in the spring of this year, um, if we go to the next slide, uh, we'll see that um, rate hikes so the when when the central bank uh, increases interest rate rates uh, is actually impacting you according to uh, uh, the, the surveys uh, that uh, we've been sending you uh, here you have a, a lot of uh, data on the same slide but let me just uh, break it down for you very quickly so uh, the top uh, two charts are from a uh, June survey that we sent to you where we uh, mentioned that the bank was in the process of uh, raising rates and we wanted to understand uh, which proportion of, uh, of uh, small businesses uh, will feel a more negative impact. And as you can see here, 30% uh, of actually of uh, small business uh, uh, small business owners mentioned that uh, the, the interest rate hikes have a significant negative impact on their business. And you can see here the breakout by sectors. Uh, I don't have the data by province here because there hasn't as much uh, variation uh, as for the sectors. But for the sectors, you can see that uh, some uh, industries like agriculture and transportation at the right hand uh, uh, at the right end are uh, more impacted, it seems, uh, by uh, interest rates uh, than uh, other sectors like social services or professional services. Uh, we're also tracking in our monthly business barometer the, the other survey that uh, has the same question since 2009, the borrowing costs. And right now, the share of businesses that are mentioning that borrowing costs are causing, causing difficulties for their business is at its highest. highest. So 35% of businesses mention that it's a difficulty. If we go to the next slide, um, I just wanted to very briefly, again, that's the chart that's coming from the Bank of Canada's uh, uh, re uh, latest report on the economy. And uh, they actually um, show here uh, how uh, an increase in interest rates, uh, for example, here, they've simulated how a uh, one percentage point in the interest rate will impact uh, new, diff different parts of the economy. And they, they've classified it by sensitive, moderately sensitive, or not so sensitive. And you can see here at the top, it's mostly the housing market, of course. They will go down by 7% with a one percentage point increase in the interest rates. Uh, and at the other end, you have uh, food, actually, that is uh, not sensitive. So what that means is uh, that um, the, the, the interest rates uh, are less likely to cool down that sector. And actually, that's what we're seeing right now with the data. The Bank of Canada has started uh, uh, raising interest rates. It has impacted almost immediately the real estate market. Uh, but as we've all witnessed uh, at the grocery store, uh, we are, aren't seeing for now uh, such a, a huge uh, drop in, in uh, or such a huge de decrease in inflation. 
So um, Simone Stewart has a question about this. What is the lag between interest rate changes and how it impacts inflation? And I think you just alluded to kind of it depends. It might depend on <clears throat> what good, what part of it. But in general, what are what is the maybe you could speak a little bit to what the Bank of Canada has been saying publicly about what they expect will happen with inflation, because I think they're saying that it probably won't won't really come down to where they want until the end of next year. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, what they're trying to do actually is uh, it, it, it's not like driving a car, right? Like where you tap the brakes and uh, it will uh, it will immediately stop where you want it or very quickly you stop. It's more like driving a boat. So there is a bit of a lag time between the moment where you do you you maneuver your uh, your thing and how it responds. So it's there. That's that's the 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 stage we're at right now the bank of canada has tapped the brakes uh since the since the spring of this year it has started increasing interest rates and actually we believe that uh, interest rates uh are going to um uh, most of the hikes are behind us uh, i think that's one of the questions we had uh, uh before the webinar even started some of you sent uh, us your questions and some were uh, wondering what is the outlook for um uh, upcoming interest rates and um uh, most economists uh believe the the next uh, the last uh, uh interest rate announcement of the year which is scheduled for uh, december 7th will probably see a uh, uh a quarter of a percentage point increase in the interest rate and and after that uh it might stay at that level for some time the bank of canada will actually uh take some time to to see uh if the the decrease in the inflation rate uh is sustained and if it continues on a downward downward path so you don't really need at that point to add a lot more interest rate increases uh, because the inflation is already on a downward path. And of course, for the Bank of Canada, it's very important because they're trying to bring inflation down, but they don't want to overdo it because if they uh, raise interest rates too much, uh, it might take us into a, uh, a, a, a very difficult economic situation where you might have a deeper, for example, recession than, than uh, you might expect if uh, they keep the balance a bit more right. But we'll have more to say in the next few slides on this. Yeah, I think that's a really important point. Their preference would be for what they call a soft landing, not a hard landing. So if they raise interest rates too fast and too high, that could um, throw the economy into... A, a recession at the same time, their single mandate really is to keep inflation um, in that 2% band. And they sent a lot of messages that they're very, very serious about um, getting us back there because the challenge is that the risk of recession is there, of course, but the risk of leaving inflation unchecked is um, is really not great for, uh, for the economy. It creates a lot of uncertainty and creates its own cycle of problems. And um, so anyway, I'll let you get back to your regular scheduled uh, <laughs> programs. Let's go to the next slide and we'll have again, uh, hopefully more time in the uh, question uh, period to to answer, uh, to, to cover more on that. Um, the central bank has said that a lot of this inflation thing is driven by demand. Uh, apparently, Canadians have lots of excess savings. That's what uh, some have said. Um, and uh, that's that's uh, why uh, inflation has gone up so uh, rapidly uh, in the past uh, couple of years. Uh, here you can see on that um, chart that's from the that's from Statscan. It shows the retail sales, and the blue line is uh, really like uh, the, the 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 current uh, retail sales in current dollars. So. You can see it's going up, but actually it doesn't take into account the effect of inflation. Uh, in other words, uh, if there is a lot of inflation, uh, you might be spending six, uh, seven, ten percent more uh, on um, holiday uh, shopping than last year. But if inflation has been ten percent, it means you're taking home the same uh, the same goods. It's just that they are at a higher price. So that increase in uh, retail sales numbers. 
uh, don't necessarily translate into um, a higher volume of uh, items being sold. It's just a monetary value that is higher. So if you take out the effect of inflation, that's the red line. What you can see is that indeed there has been an increase in sales since the since the pandemic. That the, that's the big dip that you see in the, in uh, in the line here. Uh, but uh, the line is much. Uh, flatter uh, if you take out the effect of inflation. So yes, demand is there, uh, but in real terms, in other words, without the inflation effect, uh, it is not as uh, as strong as uh, one might uh, be tempted to believe uh, if you just look at the um, uh, at the, the the current dollar uh, line. On the next slide. Uh, we wanted to take a look at the supply uh, side of things and uh, what other factors uh, are driving uh, inflation. And here there's there's more good news. So the, the charts that you're seeing here uh, are just uh, different indicators showing, for example, the price of, uh, of oil uh, or on the right hand side, it's natural gas prices. Um, They've been uh, going down lately, and they're forecasted to keep going down. Uh, so you may notice a, uh, a light gray vertical line in the uh, towards the end of both charts. Uh, so that's uh, that's uh, on the right of that it's forecasts, and on the left of that it's real data, it's historical data, uh, and you can see that um, uh, our prices uh, for oil and natural gas, especially for North America. So that's the here you have the U.S., uh, but Canada will be about the same. Uh, so uh, it's uh, pretty good. Uh, so prices are forecasted to, to go down, uh, and natural gas is, prices are forecasted to be much lower than, for example, in Europe, uh, as we all know, because of the situation in Ukraine and, and, uh, and with Russia. So um, uh, good news on that side. We also have on the next slide uh, other good news. Uh, again, a lot of indicators on supply chains. Um, uh, draw your attention to the black line on the left. GSCPI, what does that mean? Global Supply Chain Pressure Index. So that's just a global measure uh, by the Bank of Canada of uh, supply chain challenges. And it's also showing that the pressures are currently uh, easing. And if you look at different transportation costs, uh, they've been going down uh, significantly uh, 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 recently and are forecasted to go down even more significantly in the next uh, a few months and quarters. Uh, so uh, global uh, supply chain pressures are, uh, are easing. So that's, that's good news. Uh, on the next slide, uh, we've uh, we have similar data, but we've asked you uh, what you think about the current situation uh, related to uh, supply chains. Uh, I'll just draw your attention very quickly on one of the lines, the the gray line at the bottom. So we're asking you uh, every month what factors are limiting your ability to increase sales or production, and uh, you have uh, different answer choices. But one of them is product distribution constraints, which is basically. Uh, linked to uh, supply chain uh, issues. And as you can see, um, it's, it has peaked uh, at the beginning of 2022, 27% of businesses saying it's uh, limiting them, uh, but has since gone down. So it seems we're on a downward trend also uh, there with, uh, with uh, you. Uh, and uh, it's, ref it, it's reflecting uh, the global situation that we've seen in the on the previous slide. Um, on the next slide, uh, we uh, wanted to uh, share with you what are your uh, perspectives on inflation and, uh, and also uh, how you intend to change uh, your prices and your wages in the next 12 months or so. So that uh, chart is actually showing, uh, and we were able to show uh, even before StatScan, based on the, the, the information that you, you shared with us through the monthly business barometer, that uh, inflation, according to those two metrics, wages and prices, uh, has peaked uh, uh, around the beginning of, uh, or the, the end of last spring. Uh, so uh, I think prices peaked in May and wages peaked in June, according to that data. And uh, you can see that it has since on a general trend gone down. Uh, you intend right now uh, on average to raise prices for in the next 12 months by 3.9% and by 3.4% for the wages. 
so that's the latest readings from uh, the November uh, survey. So a survey you've answered only a few weeks uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, on the next slide, we have a bit more information here. As promised, I think in the uh, webinar invitation, we said we will share with you uh, data, not just for Canada uh, uh, as, a, as a whole, but as uh, also by province and by sector. So you can see here uh, uh, how it plays out for different provinces and sector. We've added asterisks uh, for certain provinces. Uh, that's uh, just to show that uh, we have fewer responses, of course, for the smaller response uh, provinces. So uh, just uh, interpret the variations with more uh, caution here. Uh, but on the sector side, you can see, for example, that we have uh, sectors such as uh, arts, uh, recreation, information who, that plan to uh, increase wages by 3.7% over the next uh, 12 a month that's among uh, the amongst the highest uh, with professional and enterprise services and for uh, prices uh, hospitality uh, sorry uh, hospitality also uh, uh, actually being the highest for wages at 3.9 percent and also the 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 highest for prices at 4.7 percent of course lots of pressures uh, on certain sectors at the moment uh, with the labor shortages and uh, we're, we'll get get to that in more detail in just a few slides. But um, uh, a, a lot of uh, challenges and a lot of demand also for um, for experiences and services right now in the economy. And so that, uh, as you can see, that translates into price and wage pressures for that, that those sectors. Yeah, and just a comment that we're hoping that uh, these data are are useful. We often get calls into our our. Um, helpline just asking what are other businesses planning to do in terms of wage increases um, and uh, maybe to a lesser extent price increases but this at least gives you an, a, a ballpark for what's going on in your sector and your uh, province and I know Simone you and I have been talking a lot about how do we get these kind of data to our members in a more regular um, uh, format. So we'd love your feedback on whether this would be useful for you because um, there are lots of firms that do these kind of wage projections, but they do them more for like the for, for like bigger businesses are mixed in there and governments mixed in and they're not always the best um, comparators. So we're looking at um, making these and, and any other economic data that would be useful for you available on a regular basis in a kind of a, an approachable, easy to digest form. So welcome your feedback on that. That's probably a good time. Uh, thanks, Laura, to remind people that you have access to this uh, uh, slide deck. Um, there's a link that's been posted in the webinar chat. Um, and uh, you you have access to the the deck there, uh, and you we we also plan to um, integrate more of that information into our future monthly business barometer reports. Again, you can get them at cfib.ca/barometer. Um, so that's uh, hopefully uh, where you can uh, uh, keep updated on uh, those uh, important uh, business metrics. Yeah, and I see Andrea put a good uh, clarification in the in the chat that these are intentions, not necessarily what actually happens, um, but um, intentions. I'm seeing Paul just made a comment that they did seven to nine percent wage increases. So the wage increases certainly have been bigger than um, what we, you know, again like inflation. And wages tend to lag inflation, which is another I think important um, uh, uh, thing to note for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, you've seen it in the, one of the previous slides, right? Like the wage line was uh, always below the price uh, uh, line, and it's it's totally normal. It's expected in uh, the economy. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, we uh, we want to talk a bit about the labor market. Um, of course, it's a big one. Uh, there's a lot of uh, issues right now. Uh, labor shortages are increasing. Uh, and uh, we wanted to share some of the information we've uh, we have we have on the current situation. So if we go to the next uh, slide, uh, we have data. Uh, well, first of all, okay, I wanted to remind you again. It's a bit like inflation. We're not and uh, in, uh, in, we're not. Uh, a lot of countries are in the same boat. Um, 
But as you can see here from that chart, comparing the change in job vacancies since uh, January of 2019, uh, Canada is among amongst the uh, highest uh, in terms of the, the percentage change with Australia. But you can see that uh, a lot of countries are also on uh, an upward uh, trend. Uh, of course, there's been a decrease uh, around the pandemic. So that's why you're seeing the lines below the vertical black line here initially, but then going back up. And we now have a, an economy in many countries where uh, there's uh, there's a, a big change uh, in job vacancy, so they're increasing. Uh, on the next slide, you'll see the data for Canada uh, that comes from a survey that um, uh, we've sent you uh, last September. Uh, so about two... Uh, more than half, I would say close to two thirds in, in, in some provinces uh, of, uh, of CFIB members mentioned that uh, they are affected by labor shortages. That's a conservative estimate, actually, because that that percentage comes from a uh, two answer choices that we've added. So those those are the businesses that said we don't have enough staff for current operations and we don't have enough staff. Uh, to expand. Uh, but there was also an additional percentage, I think it was 17% that said, we have all the staff we need, but at a significant additional cost. So um, so we could even say that uh, it's, it's impacting if we add that group uh, close to uh, it, it will be impacting close to uh, that's just eight and 10 businesses nationally. And you can see here by sector, um, there's uh, some sectors that are uh, more impact, even more impacted, uh, construction, uh, transportation, uh, enterprise and administration management, for example, uh, and hospitality being at the top of the list. And I know you're getting to this, but uh, Jennifer's uh, helping you get there a little faster. Are you expecting the labor shortage to change? I mean, this is a tricky one, isn't it, Simone? But we are, part of this is demographics, and that's not expected to uh, to to change anytime soon. And Canada had one of the biggest uh, post-war baby boom generations of all of the Western countries, which is part of why you, you see that we have a, a more significant challenge than some other uh, countries. But I'll leave you with, um, uh, I'll leave you with Jennifer's question. Demographics is uh, really uh, what is driving uh, the labor shortage uh, situation in a, in a, to a large extent. I'm not saying there aren't other factors, but uh, really we have at every moment, uh, more people leaving the uh, the labor market than entering it, um, and uh, that's hard to reverse in the short term. Uh, there are some solutions, but uh, just to give you a, a, a magnitude here, uh, an order of magnitude, uh, the the text box that you have on that slide at six hundred and sixty three. Uh, job vacancies in Q3 of 2022. That's the highest we've seen uh, since we're tracking uh, that uh, since 2004, I think at CFIB. Uh, and before the pandemic uh, uh, happened and stopped uh, uh, the, the, the labor shortages and, and their tracks for, for some time, uh, it was at 400,000. And at that time, back in 2019, we were saying it's unprecedented. We've seen, uh, we've seen since, sorry, um, uh, increase that number by 50%. So uh, there's a, a lot of challenges ahead. Uh, if we go to the next slide, we'll see, uh, however, that uh, businesses are indeed adjusting. Uh, what you're seeing here is uh, CFIB members that have a job vacancy, uh, their, uh, their uh, wage plans. And uh, that's the green line. Uh, and uh, businesses that have one, uh, uh, their wage plans are higher. Uh, so that's the blue line. So without 2.5% and with job vacancies, 3.8%. So indeed, you're making efforts here to increase wages to cope uh, with the labor uh, shortages. And just a quick comment on these numbers. Andrea was is in the chat um, with some members talking about how the averages can sometimes hide, uh, you know, the averages an average, but there are some who are expecting to do much more than this. And we've got some members in the chat saying they're planning to increase by 7% or just clip through wage increases. And we know um, that about a quarter to not quite a third, but shy of a third are, are planning to increase their wages by more than 10%. Um, okay. So these averages can be hiding some, some bigger um, shifts. So I just wanted to comment on that so that uh, that's Thank clear. You. 
Thank you, Laura. And time flies, so it's uh, time to take us to the last uh, section of that um, uh, that presentation. Uh, the R thing, so the recession, is it coming? I think uh, it's a question that uh, a lot of you uh, had for us. Uh, even before we started the webinar, where are we standing right now? Um, if you ask Canadians in public opinion polls, a lot of Canadians uh, think that we are in a recession already right now. Uh, they believe that it might uh, take some time uh, for things to, to improve. Uh, and I just wanted to share with you, if we go on the next slide, actually what uh, forecasts uh, say. Uh, usually to forecast a recession, and I have a few definitions here, uh, but to forecast a recession, there must be like a decrease um, in the GDP uh, over two consecutive quarters. So six months of uh, a decrease in the GDP to consider that the economy is in a recession. Um, what is GDP, uh, gross domestic product? Uh, you have a definition here, the monetary value of final goods and services. So everything that is uh, bought uh, or produced in a country in a given period of time. Um, and uh, you have in the table at the bottom of that slide, what are the forecasts for the, the GDP uh, according to different uh, organizations? So you have, of course, us at CFIB, we've started forecasting uh, GDP uh, recently. So we're, we do just short-term forecasts. We believe it's very hard to forecast uh, things in the very long term. And actually, a lot of economists try and uh, uh, go wrong, sometimes very wrong with their uh, long-term forecasts. So for right now, we, we focus on what we believe we have the, where we believe we have the most uh, uh, value added and where we can be more precise. But in the table, you can see here uh, in black, the, the percentages that are there are is data that, that is not forecast, actually. It's data that's been reported by StatScan. So the economy grew 3.1% in the first quarter of this year, 3.3% in the second quarter. And actually, if you look at uh, CFIB, whether it's CFIB, the Bank of Canada and their latest forecast, or uh, the private sector consensus, what, what is that? It's actually uh, when the federal government, uh, they uh, release a budget, a federal budget or a um, fiscal update like they did a few weeks ago. They ask uh, uh, chief economists from, from the main banks, for example, for their uh, forecast and they do an average of that. And you can see here uh, in the middle and last part of this table, what are, their, what are the forecasts for uh, the current quarter and Q4? And uh, actually, uh, data for Q3, I could have added it here, was just released. It was at 2.9%, actually. Uh, uh, and uh, it came out stronger than, as you can see, the Bank of Canada or private sector economists had forecasted. But even for uh, future periods, uh, the last quarter of this year and the first few quarters of next year, uh, we're not going into negative territory. So there's no red in that uh, table, which means means uh, according to most forecasts, we should be able to avoid, although it will be very narrowly, uh, we should be able to avoid a recession, technically speaking. However, uh, this is just forecast. It can still be wrong and we could go into a recession. But if it's a recession, it's going to be a mild one. And uh, as you can see here, according to those forecasts, if it's economic growth, it's going to be a very uh, uh, it's it's not it's going to be a very weak economic growth. So we're skating very close to the line here, uh, and it means that uh, as one provincial finance minister said recently, we have 100% chances of seeing a very uh, slow economy next year. If we go to the next slide, um, I think it's already time to uh, conclude and, uh, and and conclude on a few key takeaways. Um, we've seen in the first uh, part of this webinar that it's still far from normal for most small businesses. So the indicators are showing that uh, more than half are not making normal sales, uh, trailing, uh, uh, still trailing a pandemic debt. Uh, inflation is still quite high. However, it seems to be easing according to certain indicators. And there are other indicators that even have uh, haven't had the chance to share with you today, but that are showing uh, that uh, actually inflation might be coming down even a bit faster than we expected. So those are good news. It 
probably means that uh, the Bank of Canada uh, will uh, stop uh, significantly increasing interest rates uh, in the next uh, few months. So uh, we, we hope that inflation rates, uh, add, sorry, interest rates uh, after the next uh, hike that is probably going to be a quarter of a percentage point is going to stabilize at that level for some time. Uh, the labor shortages are here to stay because they're driven by demographics. Uh, and it will require strong action to face them. So in the next uh, few months and uh, throughout next year, um, count on us to keep uh, sending you uh, surveys. We want to understand uh, more what strategies you've used to, uh, to uh, cope with labor shortages. What are your thoughts, your main challenges? And we want to release more research that we can share with policymakers and hopefully try to come up with, uh, with better policies to support you as you're dealing with uh, that important challenge. Uh, it is difficult to say whether or not a recession is likely in the short term. It's a toss-up between a mild recession and very slow growth, as I've presented in the previous slide. Uh, likely, we will narrowly escape a recession, uh, but uh, it could go really one way or the other. The outlook for 2023 and beyond seems less dire than six months ago. So looking at the data uh, we've presented today, um, if, uh, if we had said that we will be in that situation six months ago, uh, we probably would have been um, encouraged to a certain extent. I'm not saying uh, things are great. I'm just saying that it seems like uh, certain indicators are doing a bit better. So that's uh, that's a note of uh, uh, optimism maybe to uh, conclude here on that presentation. Uh, hopefully we can pick up that pace and uh, and avoid the recession and tackle this inflation challenge uh, sooner. Uh, it seems like the indicator are showing good trends right now. So that's that's encouraging, even though the situation is still, uh, we know, very challenging for, uh, for a lot of you. Great, so I think we have a couple minutes to hit a few questions before we um, wind up. And I'm gonna start with uh, Richard's question, Simone, which is, is there any forecast for the CPI at the end of 2022 year over year? So where this as CPI being inflation? We do have a forecast uh, for uh, CFIB. If you go again, cfib.ca uh, slash research, uh, we have a, um, a report that we call the Main Street Quarterly, where we do forecast a few indicators, uh, and we have a forecast for core inflation. So that will be for inflation without the effect of energy and uh, food. Uh, so we have that there. We have our forecasts uh, there. Do you remember off the top, or maybe Andrea can look it up, what it is? And yeah, I think uh, if, if we can ask Andrea, maybe she can share that uh, in uh, the chat. Um, awesome. But uh, we also plan to add more inflation indicators, in, including uh, the overall inflation indicator uh, in uh, our next uh, issues of the Main Street Quarterly. The next one will come out uh, probably at, in early January. Yeah, I think one of the really interesting things about the data we have, it doesn't surprise me because we're collecting it from, um, from you, our, our members, our business owners, is, is how much more accurate our data is relative to some of the forecasts that are produced by, um, by we saw that a minute ago where um, the private sector forecasts were under, we were a, a touch, a hair over, but you know, we were the only ones projecting that uh, level of, of, of growth. And there's just because we get so many responses and we're, you know, you, you are so in touch with your, with your customers and what's going on in your businesses that our data is very accurate and now quite sought after also much more current than we come up faster than some of the other uh, like the stats can um, is able to, which we're, we're very proud of, particularly since we have no way to force you to fill out our surveys, nor would we ever want to do that. So all of the, the surveys that we get are voluntary uh, relative to you know, stats can where they can mandate that you fill them in. Um, so I'm going to hit one more question. I see one more question and then we'll wind up. So Craig is asking about an indication of the forecast for the US in the next uh, couple of quarters. I'm sure that heavily factored into our forecast, given they're our bigger, biggest trading partner. Yeah, so what's going on with the US right now? A lot of similar things. Uh, they also have like a huge uh, labor issues and an, uh, an economy that is uh, overheating uh, in, in terms of inflation. Um, the, you might have seen from the news today, the chairman of the Federal Reserve just indicated that 
uh, perhaps they will also stop uh, increasing interest rates uh, a lot in the next uh, in the next uh, a few uh, months. So the markets reacted positively, but they um, they have also a difficult situation where uh, you have like a very hot labor market, uh, high inflation. Uh, and they don't want to, with the interest rates, to engineer a recession at the same time. So they want to uh, spare the economy a recession. So uh, I would say probably for, for the U.S. economy, according to what I'm seeing from other uh, economists that are closer to that, uh, that market, um, an economy that's hopefully slowing down in the inflation that will gradually go down over 2023 uh, and uh, will probably only go back to the target uh, sometime in 2024. So, so that's the best uh, estimates right now. Uh, but for the US, it's also very tough to say whether or not they're going into a recession or not at the moment. Great. Well, I know um, that I like to end these on time as much as possible. And uh, so I'm going to give you, Simo, the a, a word to wind up, and then I'll wind us up uh, by thanking our, our members. But go ahead and, and uh, say your your uh, final comments? Well, again, I think uh, uh, it's been a few challenging years, uh, but certain indicators are uh, showing interesting, um, uh, uh, optimist, uh, optimistic uh, perspectives. And uh, thank you for being here today. Don't hesitate to reach out. Uh, uh, where I'm, I'm, I'm definitely uh, reachable, and Andrea, I think, has answered some questions today for you. So uh, all of our our team here in the research department at CFIB and economics department, we're happy to uh, chat with you and be in touch. And I hope you appreciated this uh, webinar. Thank you, and love love your feedback, uh, members, on whether you'd like us to do more of this. I'm really excited to. One of the things I've loved about the webinars is getting some of our team members in front of you, so you can see um, who they are and, and what they're doing, and they get a closer connection to you. I know um, Andrea, Simone, the Re the Marvin, our whole research team um, is really passionate about uh, making sure that our surveys are good, that the data that we collect is good, and they read all of your. In case you ever wonder, do we read all the comments? We read every comment and that really does help us really stay um, with you in terms of the challenges that you're facing. A couple of upcoming things we've got is the launch of the cybersecurity. We've got some cybersecurity um, training modules on our website. So we'll be soft launching those, we'll probably do a webinar on it again. We did one um, this year. We'll probably do another one because that's a pretty important topic as well. And then we're looking at doing a diversity and inclusion uh, webinar early in 2023. Again, trying to make that topic very approachable and practical uh, for businesses. And so we will, um, those are upcoming, but don't be shy about suge your suggestions for what webinars you'd like to see us uh, do in the future. This is the last one of the year. So I am going to wish you a very happy holiday and um, uh, I hope everyone has a nice new year. I think many of us are gonna be a little bit happy to put 2022 in the rear view mirror along with the other kind of um, pandemic, uh, pandemic years. Um, and here's to, uh, here's to a really bright and less foggy 2023. It looks like we've got some positive indications, Simone, that, that uh, we may be coming out of some of that fog. And so, um, yeah, so with that, we'll, we'll wish you, uh, a, 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 a nice holiday season, lots of good times with family and friends, and we will hope to connect with you very early in the new year. And as Simone said, don't hesitate to call us or, or um, you know, we'd love to hear from you on the helpline and Simone, the researchers, we're all available. We love talking to members. We're so, on LinkedIn, thanks. we're on Twitter, we're reachable. Uh, yeah, Twitter, Twitter, you can follow Twitter. research on Twitter too, if you're, yeah. if you really like this, uh, this stuff. And Simone's doing a great job making more of this available in, in really um, easy to digest way. So thanks everyone.